Disclaimer, I'm not sponsored by nor am I affiliated with any of the companies mentioned in this video. All opinions represented are mine and mine alone. They do not represent anyone besides myself. Your opinions may differ. That's okay. Try this stuff out for yourself in order to find out if it works for you. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, if you've never been here before in your life, welcome to my little art corner on YouTube. Today, we're going to be doing something a little different. This came in a FabFitFun box from summer of 2017. My mom actually gave this to me to use since she hasn't used it. It's been about a year and a half. This is a Ready, Set, Create kit, and it's a limited edition art kit by Amy Tangerine. And there's a Learn Tips and Tricks from Amy, and her Instagram is Amy Tangerine, and it's Tangerine Like the Fruit. So this is just the back side of this. Obviously, it comes with a canvas. It's an 8x10 canvas. I'm assuming it's a cotton canvas. There's a little set of acrylic paints, a tiny, tiny brush, and what looks to be a sponge tip applicator, and a plastic bit, which this plastic bit might be a palette. We'll find out when I open it up. And I'm just going to read the little description back here. Get in touch with your creative side with the Ready, Set, Create Art Kit by Amy Tangerine. It comes with everything you need to tap into your inner artist. A canvas, brushes, I just see one brush, maybe there's more, acrylic paints, and a gorgeous alphabet stencil. There's a stencil that you saw it on the front there. Just pick up the brush and let the creativity flow. About Amy, in 2007, Amy Tan discovered her true passion, scrapbooking. It was started as a hobby, blossomed to full-time business venture that has included everything from celebrity events to sharing DIY scrapbooks and crafts on her YouTube channel, Amy Tangerine. Amy's mission is to inspire women everywhere to have the confidence and joy through creativity. In 2017, she launched her book, Craft a Life You Love, which hit number one bestseller and number one new release in craft and hobbies on Amazon. And I don't know if these are still up, but apparently fabfitfun.com backslash art. There's exclusive tutorials with Amy to show you how to use it. I'm not going to lie, I'm probably not going to end up using the stencil part. But we can see how these paints work for what I would normally do. We will find out. So I was wrong. This isn't also a palette. I'm sure you could kind of use it that way, but it's just a plastic insert. There are some little dents in the canvas, which is most likely just from the packaging there. I'm not going to be too concerned about it because honestly, I'm not going to probably try to sell this piece because this isn't, uh, these aren't going to be artist grade acrylics probably. So they're most likely not going to be light fast. So this is just going to be a fun little project today. The brush itself is like super duper tiny. That's just so you can see the brush a little bit better. Uh, it does come to a nice tip. It feels like it's set in place like that. So that'll be good for little details. I might end up pulling in some bigger brushes to be able to make some of this other stuff a little easier. And these are just the colors we have. Uh, we got a yellow, we got a red, we have a green, we have a blue, we have a pink which, okay, I would have preferred maybe a black to help deepen stuff, but pink's cute. I mean, you could just mix those together theoretically to get that, but whatever. And this is just a better look at that sponge tip applicator. It looks like it's already kind of crooked or it's glued on crooked, so we will probably use that for backgrounds to try to get a little bit more texture going on. Um, I think for this, since this video will be up, probably right after Valentine's Day that I might do a rose. We got red. Yeah, we'll do a rose. A rose should be nice. Uh, the rose photo that I will do will most likely be from Paint My Photo, which I'll leave a kind of a link for what that is in both the description and on screen, just so you know. And we'll get rid of these dents later after I actually do the painting. We'll just spray some water on the back there. But first, dee -dee -dee, let's make it so you guys can actually see the stuff when I'm painting. 
that'll be a little easier and helpful, right? So obviously I'm pulling in a couple things to make this work a little bit better so we can try to have a successful project. I'm bringing in a watercolor palette that came with a Winsor & Newtonman Cotman watercolor set I bought forever ago. There's still paint on here from previous experiments, but we have some clean spots right here and we can kind of work around it. I'm really bad about cleaning them off in between. I know, a bad artist's bad. Next, I have a titanium Robert Simmons brush, pretty large one. It is a TT44 and it is a flat brush. This one I know I got from Michaels quite a few years ago on clearance. I have another flathead brush. I like how I say flathead like it's a flathead screwdriver. I have another flat brush, a smaller one, to help with some more painting. And this one is by Art Lily. It doesn't really have a number or anything on it. I think I got this from an Amazon brush pack because I tend to buy them because I am very abusive to my brushes. I don't take very good care of them and I don't see the point in spending a shit ton for them. So we will be getting into that project now. Oh, and in case you're wondering, I also have a cup of water. Okay, so from it sitting for a year and a half, um, a lot of the paint is just dried in the tube. It kind of looks like a uh, solid watercolor that you have to have water too to get it to work. So we will see if we can make it work. I'm still going to try, but this might make it a little more difficult. <laughs> oh, you can see that this is like solid. That's just solid. Hmm. Well, we can still try, right? So I am trying to do an outline using the paint itself. I quickly realized that there's definitely not a lot of pigment to it and I had to use a lot of water in order to get anything to show up. So I decided to treat it kind of like watercolor. I also found out that the red and the green were completely dried out to the point where I could literally get no pigment from them whatsoever. Which, honestly, that might have absolutely nothing to do with the quality of the paint. It could just be a storage issue because I don't know exactly what the conditions these were kept in were. There's also a chance that those little jars were not uh, sealed completely tightly in there. And since this is about a year and a half old, it could possibly be past the shelf life. I didn't see anything about that on here. I will say this video is most likely not an accurate representation of what the product can actually do when it's new. Brand new, this was $22. I am maybe changing my mind about whether the paint was supposed to be acrylic paint or if it's just supposed to be like a poster quality paint, which would make sense with the lettering and everything. $22 brand new is what this sold for then, and it looks like you could get it from eBay. Poshmark and some other places for between ten and fifteen dollars. So not a bad price at all Definitely an affordable way to kind of play around with some paint and just create something not everything has to be a professional quality to have fun And this is supposed to be more of like a hobbyist kit or like a crafting kit just for a project It's not meant to be a professional artist kind of kit it was fun to kind of play around with it and to see what it actually could do. I didn't get as frustrated with this as I have with some stuff that's supposed to be professional quality because knowing the price and knowing it came with a box that's not necessarily an art box, but it's just supposed to be a fun little project or activity. My expectations were not quite as high and I viewed this more as a challenge almost to kind of see what it could do and I had to use a lot of workaround skills and thinking in order to kind of fix it and make it look like something that I could be at least kind of proud of. Definitely got to use a lot of troubleshooting in this and there is so much water on that canvas right now. I'm using the sponge to get a little bit more texture in that background. 
I had to use a lot, a lot of water to get it to kind of do anything. And you can't really tell on camera how much water there is right now. You will be able to see when I bring in a blow dryer later to make it dry more quickly exactly how much water is on this thing because you see how it kind of swooshes across. Yes, swooshes, that is a technical term. You see how it moves across the canvas when the air is introduced. So far, I've been able to use the blue, the pink. I've also been able to mix a green out of the blue and the yellow. Because like I said, that green was so dry. You can see it on the palette, just the dry chunk. And I did really try to put a lot of water on it to get it to reactivate, but that was too far past the point of reactivation to be able to do anything with it. That's the swoosh I was talking about. This shows you exactly how much water I had on here. That's the blow dryer coming in. <laughs> Moves the canvas around a little bit too, but yeah. Uh, I had to use a little bit of water. Luckily, I don't have to use any water on the back of it now to get those dents out of the canvas. I used enough on the front in order to take care of it. So that works. By the way, this ends up looking nothing like the reference photo for a couple of reasons. First of all, the paint did not cooperate as well as I wanted it to because I was missing certain colors. I really couldn't mix in white to lighten anything up. And I didn't really want to leave the white of the canvas showing through. I also realized like mixing the white didn't really lighten up anything. I did learn that since the colors are so translucent, you are able to glaze them to create a different color. And what glazing is, is it's basically putting one color over another to create a new one. For example, I end up putting yellow over blue that's already on there when it's dry and it makes it look green. I also kind of cheated. I pulled in Sharpies to help add some contrast and some definitive lines. I think if I didn't use these that it would honestly just look like a big blob of nothing in similar toned colors. The reason I use Sharpies is because it's in a similar price point since the pack itself is a less expensive set. I did not want to bring in Copics or Winsor & Newton pigment markers because those are pricier items. I was trying to find something that most people would be able to afford or might already have. And I started outlining the petals of the rose in red to help add in a little bit more of a darker color because my initial plan was to blend in the pink and the red and I was not able to do that, unfortunately. I'm also extending the one petal to make it more shape accurate to the original photo, which once again, this ends up not looking anything like it just because of what I ended up doing and the direction I had to kind of go into to make it work. I also used water over the red Sharpie to kind of blend it in to the paint that's already down there. And I'm also using a black Sharpie in order to get a lot of the lines out there and using some cross hatching to emulate a little bit more shading. This ends up becoming a bit more of like a line drawing that happens to have a little bit of paint on it. Most of the paint is used in the background. And this is just really the only way I could think of to make it work, to make it look Am I decent? I am wondering how well the paint itself would have mixed and the different shades I could have gotten if the set was newer, if the paint hadn't have been dried out. I could have probably gotten something that is a little bit less of a line drawing and with more tonal shading with the paints. This right here is a white water-based Sharpie, which I actually use in a lot of work. Once again, this is just to add a little bit more contrast. 
I feel that with something like this, it needs that just little bit of white to make it pop just that tiny bit more. And right there I did use the glazing technique, which is something, like I said, you can use with any kind of translucent paint. Since these paints are not very opaque, it is a good valid technique to use with them. And I'm just going to be progressively adding more Sharpies. I'm going to be adding more of that red, using more of that black to outline and to do more shading as we keep going. I also pull in a couple of different Sharpie colors a little bit later. And I also use that white for all of the highlights. I was also able to blend a little bit of the black Sharpie by going over it with the red Sharpie while both are still a little wet. I will say the blend's not as good as like Copics or even Prismacolor alcohol-based markers, and it's not as good as uh, the Winsor Newton pigment markers or even their watercolor markers. All of those are markers you could theoretically use in a set or in a project like this on this, but I think that the price point would just be kind of silly to use with a kit that was $20. I kind of wanted to, once again, use something that was in a similar price point. If I had some Crayola markers, I would have gone with that. I'm sure it would be really possible to do that with this too. And that would have been fun as well, kind of bring it back to childhood a little bit. Also, friendly reminder, if you are going to be using Sharpies for any extended period of time, please remember to be in a well-ventilated room. They have some pretty heavy fumes, and it's very, very easy to forget about it until you have spent a couple hours on something and then you realize that the fumes have made you a little lightheaded. Just a extra reminder there. Right there, I used some of the white paint Sharpie in order to lighten up that area because I felt like it was getting a little dark. I then tried to put the pink right over it, and I forgot how much more pigmented the white Sharpie was going to be than these paints that came in this kit. So I had to use the hairdryer there really quick because putting the pink over while it was still wet just would not have worked. It would have just spread the white around like it did. I also threw some red in the shadows on the stem and the leaf because red and green are complementary colors on the color wheel and it makes a little bit of a brown when they are on top of each other. I did that just so it wouldn't be the color and then black. I was trying to give a little bit of depth and a slight little bit of subtlety and some mid-tones. By the way, a hairdryer can be your best friend if you are using water-based paints like acrylic or watercolor because it speeds up the drying process pretty quickly. The only one that doesn't really work for is oil paint and that's because the drying process of oil paint is more of a curing process. As you can see, the painting is coming along okay. It's at least starting to kind of look like something. It looks more like a rolled piece of bacon right now than a rose, but it at least looks like something. But I do love bacon, so I'm okay with that. It can look like a rolled piece of bacon as much as it wants to. The original Black Sharpie it was starting to lose its juice a little bit. I think it's near the end of its life cycle, so I grabbed another one. And with this one, I'm definitely going in and adding in a lot more black. I also grabbed a green, a purple, a yellow, and a magenta, which a lot of those I don't actually really use, or some of them I don't use or don't use a lot. But with that black, I'm definitely going in a lot more with some heavier lines. Use that green a little bit in the stem, just add a tiny bit more depth as well. and. Like I said, we're just going to be thickening up the lines, especially the outer lines. I wanted to use a lot of heavy line weight in this one. 
especially for the outline because it also helps give it an illusion of a little bit better shading. You can definitely give an illusion of depth with just using different line weights, even without cross hatching. And you can see just by using heavier lines how much more it stands out from the background. Used a yellow in between some of the green and white just to add a tiny bit more color. And we're adding in some thorns just in black because I realized my rose did not have thorns and every rose has its thorn. I decided since I did not get to use a lot of the other items in the kits, a lot of the other paint colors that I was going to actually use that stencil, which I used it with the paint marker first, which was stupid because I should have waited for it to dry to move it. And I just decide hey we'll just do it in black and then I dry that little white A I tried to do and then we did it in black and for the text I did an intentional misquote of Shakespeare and it's gonna end up saying a flower by any other name I just felt it suited the drawing is this gonna be a drawing or a painting it suited the project so I did it. I also wanted the lettering to be kind of funky and not exactly just a straight thing across. I wanted it to kind of flow and follow and be kind of weird looking. I like how it kind of looks like an old fashioned chain letter <laughs> or a ransom note, whichever you prefer. <laughs> And this wouldn't be one of my videos if some of the project was accidentally done off screen. There we go. I realized it and fixed it fairly quickly for me. I decided to outline the letters with the white paint marker because I realized, oh crap, I have white behind the one. I should probably add it to the other one. So that's what we're doing next. Well, this project's almost over. Um, in conclusion, I had a lot of fun doing this despite like all the obstacles I came up against. I do want to once again point out that this is obviously not going to be an accurate representation of the quality of the products because something happened and it could have just been storage. They are over a year and a half old and, you know, shit's just going to happen and this was just a case of shit happening. This is not going to be an actual review of the quality of it because I think there were a lot of outside forces that made it not work as well as it probably should have. Have any of you used anything from the Ready, Set, Create line by Amy Tangerine? What do you think of the products? Let me know in the comments down below. If you liked this video, hit that like button. If you disliked it, hit that dislike button. If you have any questions, feelings, comments, concerns, please leave them down in that comment section below. If you liked this video and you want to see more like it or want to just hear me ramble about art in general, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for your time. And I hope you have a great day or night, depending on when you're watching this. I will hear from you guys soon, hopefully, and you will definitely hear from me in about a week.